My guest is Richard Devaney, professor at Dartmouth's Tuck School of Business. He is the author of the new book, Beating the Commodity Trap. This has to do with the commoditization of various products and, and mm -hmm. indeed services that companies provide. Uh, Richard, talk about uh, a little bit more about proliferation. You say this is uh, when a company is almost attacked by a, by a school multiple of multiple directions. Yeah, yeah. multiple directions. Yes. E explain how a company deals with that. Well, uh, let, let's continue on with the Sears Roebuck example right. that we started talking about. Sears actually came up under Ed, Bre uh, under Ed Brennan with a very, very good set of strategies to cope with um, proliferation because the biggest problem with proliferation is you can't fight everybody everywhere all the time. And so they decided to pull back from certain marketplaces. So they pulled out of the wish book. They pulled out of the low end home appliances uh, like irons and toasters and things like that. And a lot of the stuff that you'd buy in Walmart, dishes and home goods and that type of thing. Um, they decided then to reposition against uh, the department stores, their, uh, their mall stores at Sears. And they did that with the softer side of Sears campaign. And then part of the strategy was to build a whole number of standalone stores so Sears hardware would directly confront a Home Depot and Sears furniture stores would directly confront the, the specialists. And the, the strategy in theory was a great one. The, the problem was is that uh, Arthur Martin as the next CEO uh, kind of uh, missed the boat I think. And part of what happened was they never fulfilled their promise on the the uh, standalone stores, and they had plans for thousands of standalone stores, and they built like six um, because he was trying to think in the short term, and that was to improve the profitability of the mall stores. And then they never followed up with the softer side of Sears. That the campaign came and went uh, again, short term thinking to get short term profits. Talk about, and uh, in the book you mentioned this, uh, this, I think it's a, a proverb, uh, really a quote rather from uh, a uh, Chinese philosopher um, talking about how is it opportunities multiply as they are seized, is Lao Tzu. Uh, yeah. Explain why that is so key to understanding the commoditization trap mm -hmm. that you can seize an opportunity and they are created as you create more of them. Don't right. let up. Right. So uh, this is the story of Apple. Uh, it, it, for example, with Apple, what, what they've done is they've coped with two commodity traps simultaneously. One is proliferation, and the other one is, uh, which we've talked about already, and the other one is escalation. As they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, um, they've proliferated the number of competitors that they have to fight with. So first they were fighting with IBM and HP and Dell, and now they're fighting, and then they were fighting with Motorola and Nokia and Samsung, and, and, and then they morph into this, uh, the cell phone into the iPad, which has just come out recently, which is like a kind of giant, fun um, iPod, basically, and uh, a big screen with the same kind of operating system on it, and be a, a lot more interesting to use than just clicking on the on the uh, computer key pad. Uh, so, <clears throat> basically, you watch what what Apple has done is first of all they they beat the proliferators in each case because they came in with such a killer product. So they looked at one format that was superior to everybody. So rather than fighting each player one at a time, they came out very much ahead. Um, and, and then secondly, uh, the escalation trap that they faced was one that's kind of a, uh, a process of higher and higher quality for low and lower price. And what they did to cope with that, uh, th that becomes a kind of arms race um, where the first one to blink loses, and because if you get left behind in the pack, you're in bad shape. But, but the dilemma is, is that you keep going with that and you end up uh, basically giving away your your highest quality product. So how did Apple um, combat so, this? So a Apple did this in a very clever way. They harnessed the nature of um, the escalation and they always led the pack. And so they came in with a very premium product, uh, for example, with the iPhone that, that laid waste to Motorola and Nokia and Samsung. And then they progressed 
very quickly, speeding up the, the movement in their lines, uh, uh, their, their product line over time, lowering and lowering the price faster than everybody else. So they, they outpaced everyone, making everybody else lose and catch up as they went along. But then right at the edge of precipice of price war, they reinvent a whole new marketplace and take the product to a new level. And force so, other people to follow uh, them once again. Once again. And, and in the meantime, all the traditional players jump off the cliff because they think they're in the telephone business. Uh, rather than in the in the computer business and they jump off the the, the cliff into price competition and and uh, that buys even more time for Apple to build in the, the new position all right I want to thank you very much Richard Devaney the author of beating the commodity trap giving us some insight into how companies thrive and survive Com